to interrupt this episode. I hope you're enjoying it, but I want to talk to you about one of the sponsors that make these episodes possible. Today, let's talk about Cryptic Clothing. It is a veteran-owned, patriot-loving, God-fearing company that builds unbelievable clothing and camouflage. If you haven't checked them out, do so at cryptic.com. Check out some of their altitude pieces, which are my favorite, some of the best fabrics, insulating layers. They got the, no matter what hunt you're going on, no matter what adventure, even if it's just a dinner with the wife, they have the piece that you want to wear out, outside as well as support in this ever-loving, God-fearing, veteran-owned company. Well, welcome to Eastman's podcast edition. Uh, Ike Eastman here, your host. I have Brian Barney, the man in the in the stand with me. Uh, we're gonna we're not gonna just talk hunting. We're gonna talk Brian Barney and who he is and what makes Brian Barney tick, which is gonna be fun. Um, I started this podcast primarily, Brian, just so because here's the thing: there's there's a ton of podcasts, there's a ton of things of content that people want to learn, right? But people don't usually understand the people behind that podcast mm -hmm. you know who is brian barney where, where were you born what did you do as a kid where you know what makes you tick what are you gonna be doing and i always ask people three questions number one uh what can my audience learn from you you know what what are you passionate about teaching because everybody wants to teach they have something that they're really good at mm -hmm. and what is that i think I think your audience knows what that is. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope so. <laughs> Number two, I always ask people, what what are you going to be thinking about on your deathbed? What what really matters to you? Mm -hmm. And and usually the the things that people can learn from you and the things that really matter, they'll be connected, but they they aren't a hundred percent. They're never usually the same. Mm -hmm. um, and then the the third thing is, um, what why do you hunt? You know, why, and, and I, you know, our podcast, my podcast is about hunting is the red thread that connects everybody. Everybody's a hunter. I don't want to talk to you if you're really not, because we probably have a different lifestyle. And this is really a lifestyle phone, a, a podcast about who we are as hunters. And it's not just hunting, obviously, that's a part of it. But mm -hmm. wh what else do you do? You know, I know you're a huge fisherman. What else do you do, you know, other than those things? So um, that's why I started it. Mm -hmm. Uh I think it's interesting. I've had some really cool conversations with, with uh, Mike Glover and some guys around the office. And of course, this is going to be fun. To me, this is going to be fun because I don't know, I don't even know the backstory mm -hmm. of who Brian Barney is. So talk me through where were, where'd you grow up? Where were you born? And how did you get to where you're at now? Then, you know, in, in your own words, what were the big things? Mm hmm. Yeah. Um, first off, it's great to be on this side of the table. The pressure's <laughs> off. <laughs> so uh, this has been a long time coming. Like, I don't know if you'll take this the right way or not, but you are a social butterfly. Like, you know everybody when we go to these shows. I blame and you my have, mom for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you, you have so many... Uh, uh, friends and connections and then you have so many in-depth conversations with these guys like I've been in the room when we talked to Glenn Eberly or when we talked to you know some of your friends that you've had for a long time and you're um, you're interested in people's lives you're yeah. interested in people's story yeah. and, and I can almost interest you like you say the the, the thread that connects us all is hunting and we definitely talk hunting when we get together yeah. but I can almost interest you more with a human piece like yes. if I tell you hey uh, my kids playing basketball and then we go into my kid playing basketball and fouling, fouling out. out and then your kid <laughs> fouling out like you're you're genuinely genuinely interested in people's lives so this is a perfect fit it's gonna I be on that. your platform and uh, yeah, I'm really excited. And um, now you'll know the know what I go through I to know. Uh, produce the podcast. So. Brian, Brian told me we we, we told him oh, we're going to do this. And Brian goes, are you? he literally looked at me and said, "Are you sure you want on this treadmill? Because this <laughs> thing doesn't end. It's just run, 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 run. <laughs> How many are you going to do?" Oh, gosh, I have to have a number. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, well, and. Um, you dove headfirst into it too. You've been reading about it, researching it, listening to podcasts, knowing what you like in a podcast, and then yeah. finding your own voice as well. And we're all individuals, and so no two podcasts are alike. And yep. and um, uh, I just think you're going to do great with it. So yeah, I'm super excited for you. Yeah, yeah. thanks for having me on. Yeah, this is going to be fun. I, I I think it's going to be great. Um, you know, if you want hunting knowledge, hunting tactics, go to Eastman Eastman's Elevated. Brian will give you that. If yeah. you want to know about people's lives. 
lives and interesting stories, you know, the podcast edition might be something you're interested in. So tell me, Brian, where were you born? Because you, you live in Montana now, but you weren't born in Montana. Yeah, I was born in western Washington. Western Washington. Yep, so I was born a um, little town just near Olympia, Washington, so Pacific Northwest. Okay. Um, grew up in a family that loved to hunt. We had a, a cabin that my family built uh, that sat up in Packwood, which is up in the Cascades up there. Wow. And so, uh, you know, it was an adventure. Is that my black parents. Con- Blacktail country? Yeah, Blacktail and Roosevelt's, yeah. Okay. Um, and um, so, yeah, we would go up on the weekends and hunt. My parents got divorced when I was young, about five years old or so. Oh, wow. And so, um, yeah, when they got divorced, my dad is uh, just such a solid human being. And so he constantly made the effort, you know, a couple times a week to pick us up. The Every other weekend made sure to support my mom. And um, awesome. I never heard them talk bad about each other. Oh, ever. that's saying you something. Know, the, so, That's really saying uh, something. Just really good people. And so, um, yeah, I grew up uh, living primarily with my mom, and um, I had to have a full sister. And so we grew up there. But, yeah, my dad would take me hunting, and my f- whole family would go up to this cabin. And we had three, four weekends of deer season and then one weekend of extended buck where they opened the season for four days for rutting blacktails, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And so I just grew up. Uh, uh, hunting up and through there. I was the first one in my family to get a bow at about 13 years old. I worked all summer long on my dad's house, and then he bought me my first bow. <laughs> that and, was that uh, was your payment? Yeah, that was at my 13. payment. Yep, that was wow. my payment for working all summer. I don't think I made a good <laughs> hourly wage. <laughs> <laughs> he took care of us. Oh, yeah, he did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, I was so excited to get a bow, and uh, my dad had bought this piece of property, and it bumped up against this public land but it didn't have much access unless you own this property and so i was able to disappear in these woods and go hunt blacktail go hunt elk back there i had tree stands set and so i spent a lot of time in the woods just exploring and being a kid and uh hunting rabbits on the railroad tracks fishing the creek the creeks and um so yeah i had a a really good upbringing and then you know i got in high school and um yeah, as we got in high school, you know, I'd still hunt on those weekends, but the seasons were so short. And at that point, I found wrestling. And so I was a smaller guy. I mean, I'm huge now. But, yeah, uh, I know. Yeah. Your ego is huge anyway. <laughs> but, uh, You're a wrestler. I, yeah, yeah. I was no just kidding. a little guy. And um, they needed the small guys to fill the smaller weight classes. Yeah, you know, so to they, get the whole team so yes. that you get team points. So they recruited me. And so um, I found wrestling, and I was one of the smaller guys. But I just started learning all these lessons I had these great coaches that took an interest in me and so uh the harder i worked the more i'd achieve and i started putting everything into it wrestling freestyle wrestling greco and then uh what running the greco? roads greco is all upper body wrestling so you can't touch can't the use. legs or you can't really? use the legs for a takedown so it's all throws and it's all upper body and <gasps> um and then on the ground you try to roll them over and if you roll them over you get two points but it's highly competitive and uh you can take it to all different levels and right now it's really fun my sister's kid nolan mm-hmm. uh, is rated first in the state he has regionals coming up this weekend and then state in next Washington? weekend yeah, uh in montana, montana. yeah so uh how i moved to montana is i i went through my wrestling career and i didn't go on to college like my grades weren't great like i'm really good at learning about stuff i'm interested in like girls and uh <laughs> girls in wrestling was we about, all went through that stage didn't we? <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah i learned uh, uh well i don't know that i learned a lot but <laughs> i sure tried I practiced like crazy yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um yeah, I, I got through high school and wrestling was everything to me, but I almost burned myself out. It was like the weight cutting would really get oh, yeah. to me and, and just this constant hard work where I never gave myself a break. Uh, but I was building this this mental toughness and I was building uh, I was building all these the, these great characteristics uh, Skills. of discipline and hard work. And I, I was soaking it all in. I just didn't realize it. And I, I didn't really know how to put it out in the world. But what I did know is I, I worked construction and um, I was 19 and I kind of finished high school and I just didn't, I didn't have some a place for quit, my passion. Some point you quit getting bows as, as payment <laughs> yeah. and actually making money at <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I was making paychecks. And so, <laughs> You know, college, I just wasn't interested. It was like, I got to go to work. I got to make money. And, um, you know, we lived middle class, but, you know, my mom was trying to support us. And so, you know, there wasn't extra money around like we had to work for it. So I had a job ever since I was, you know, 
13, 14, yeah. had a paper route. And my paper route, uh, I, I got a paper route, but I didn't get one in my neighborhood. And so I had to ride like <laughs> two, three miles up this hill. With, with, pa- with a full load of papers. Yes, but in the dark in the Pacific Northwest with, with cars going down the highway, oh no sidewalk. And you're talking this 13-year-old kid that weighs about 70 pounds. And then I'd have to do this bike route every morning at 5 in the morning, 4.30 in the morning. So they deliver you, papers. Did you ever look at it and go, I don't think I'd let my kids do that. There is no way. <laughs> my, my parents were insane. It was a different day It was and a age. different time. Yes. But still, that's crazy. Oh, I'm I'm so surprised I'm not kidnapped in a basement right now. <laughs> but um, anymore, yeah, yeah, I would do that paper out, and I remember there were so many dogs on there, and I almost got like a, a, a phobia of dogs because I had been bit so many times on my paper route. You're so I would me. have my bike and my papers, my 13 year old kid, and I get scared to death on this paper route every morning because I'd have pit bulls that would chase me on that bike, and and I got bit quite a few times coming into yards and things and so i finally had to get pepper spray that i was carrying around so this is all training for grizzly bear country you know you've been been doing this before it was cool (laughs) yeah exactly hey folks i hope you're enjoying the content today today i want to talk a little bit about where you get your gear Now, as hunters, we have a plethora of options, everything from big box stores to online retailers. But today I want to talk about Black Ovis and what makes them unique. BlackOvis.com is an online retailer. They've been doing it for a long time and dare I say the longest. They not only do they have unbelievable customer support, they also pick up all the brands you want, Zamberlin boots, cryptic clothing, you name it, they carry it and unbelievable prices They have a discount with us, so check them out, blackovis.com, and let them know that Ike sent you. So, uh, anyways, I had the paper route, wrestling, had jobs through high school, worked for uh, Albertsons as a bag boy, and then I got a construction job for another company that wasn't my dad's company, even though he owned one there at the time. And I would work uh, for my dad, obviously, uh, uh, summer times leading up to that. And um, got 19, and I got out of wrestling, and I was just lost. I was I was partying, I was drinking, and I, I just didn't have a purpose, and I just felt like my life wasn't going going anywhere construction I was making a paycheck but you know I wasn't really yeah. l- leading to the top of the crew or anything and so it's just kind of lost and I really love the outdoors I fell in love with steelhead fishing yeah. I fell in love with uh, hunting and bow hunting but there wasn't much opportunity and my dad had traveled to Ennis Montana and had gone hunting and so he'd tell me about it and tell me about all the mule deer and the elk he saw. And so when I'm 19 and I got no ties and I don't know where to put my passion, I figure I'm going to move to Montana. Pop smoke and go to Ennis. Yes. And so my dad had a contact there, uh, drove to Ennis. That contact was an electrician. He hooked me up with a, a contractor that hired me on the spot, said, get out here in two weeks. And so pretty much went home and packed up you know, a couple boxes is all I owned and stuff (laughs) at that point and moved out here. Your bow and that's it. Yeah. And, um, and then my, um, my family started moving over after me. My dad moved over a year after I did. And then my sister moved out. And, um, so I moved over to Montana and just immersed myself in the outdoors. I couldn't get enough of it. All of a sudden I had this place for my passion. And then, you know, I remember, waiting at my mailbox for your guys's magazine to come in my (laughs) mailbox as i would read every article in there i was trying to soak up information i read your dad's book i read so i just started to fall in love with this western hunting and whether it was horn hunting bear hunting elk hunting, whatever it was i was just hunting and at that point i was an any weapon guy and so i was taking any and all opportunities rifle bow uh whatever i could get and so um started hunting and just falling in love with it and then just wanting to push my limits and, and and looking and seeing there's other opportunities out there, um, started traveling the lower 48, looking for adventure and going on these, started sharing the story through your magazine. Yeah, yeah and um, got published multiple times. <laughs> yeah, and I, remember, <coughs> I remember uh, we had the editor at the time, he walked into my office and he said, um, Brian Barney, yeah, do you realize he's been in every magazine in the last year? I said, what? He goes, yeah, he's written something in, every, and this is before you were a staff writer. You were just a writer, just submitting your stories like everybody does. And you were in almost every single bow hunting journal that, that year. And I said, you need to reach out to him and see if he'll write as a staff writer. And, and you have been 
every single editor I've had says Brian Barney is the man. You write unbelievably. You don't. They don't. They don't have to mess with with your stuff like they do mine. They they constantly. They they rewrite mine actually. <laughs> they do. And but your stuff comes in clean. It comes in passionate. It comes in very informative. It, and I just want to thank you publicly for all of that. What you do is amazing for these people. Yeah. Um, thank you so much. It's such a huge compliment. Oh, it's compliment. Yeah. That means the world to me. That's um, that's definitely what I want. But it. It didn't come easy or natural. No. Like I, you're looking at a D English student right in front <laughs> of you. Too. You know, I did not pay attention. I was horrible at uh, spelling and grammar. It was just my passion for bow hunting that I realized that this is how I tell my story. Yeah. This is how I can talk about these adventures. This is how I can share this with guys. And so I was passionate about it and really applied myself and, and worked hard at it so I could be able to write and tell my story and get published. So those were like the training wheels for me is to be able to write and really work on this story to turn in something of quality to you yeah. guys. And then to get the chance to staff write for this, you know, <clears throat> magazine that I've idolized for so long was this amazing opportunity. And so, of course, anytime I get opportunity, you work really hard at it. But just through, I'm able to, to transition this, this passion for wrestling and all these lessons I've learned into, into hunting, eventually into construction and move my way up and own my own business and NS there. And it was the same thing. I just found... Uh, you know, I, I found uh, the path. I found that through hard work, I could achieve more. You're only given the talent you're given. And if you put your head down, especially in today's day and age, and you work hard and you learn and you pay attention, you can go as far as you want. You don't have to be the most intelligent guy no, in the world. You just have to work hard yes. and, and show up and show up well. Yes. I, I tell my kids this. <clears throat> all you have to do, do what you're asked, do it well and do it on time. And you will be a success. That's it. That's all you have to do. That's all you have to do. Well, and it's it's so important, you know, to to pass on, uh, you know, these characteristics or these things that I admire or just being a good human to our kids. But they have to go through it as well. Like they didn't go through everything we did to build our mental toughness. And so yeah. they're starting at square yeah. one. And you're trying to build these people and implement these things that you want to see that you know is going to make a good, meaningful life for them. Yes. And so you just keep kind of advising them. And you see them through their lows and through their highs. And, and that's the same thing. Is I just want my girls to have passion for something. It doesn't have to be bow hunting. It doesn't have yeah. to be fly fishing. Find what you love to do and put everything into it and apply yourself. And that's a meaningful life. Isn't it, isn't it fun to, um, I, I, I've talked to a lot of people about this. This is one of my passions. Isn't it interesting that when you have children, you understand the meaning of life? It's not about me. It's about passing the stuff that I know and that I've learned through hard knocks, through, you know, getting paid for a bow, a bow to build a cabin. Those are things that you pass on. Mm-hmm. And you pass those on to your children. And then you hope that they pass on. That's a true legacy. That's actually what a legacy is. It's not, he's the greatest whatever. No, it's simple things. Hard work, determination. What you were just talking about, that's your legacy. And that's what you're passing off your kids. And that's what they're going to pass on. And so three generations down, you go, oh, yeah, great, great grandpa Barney was awesome. And here's why. Mm -hmm. Those are your legacy. Mm -hmm. Um, 100%, Ike. That's it. Yeah, that's that's all that's all you have in life is uh, who you are, you know, the life that you live. And we say that in in their words and it kind of goes in the back of your brain like you don't even really think about it. But that's the truth is we all have this expiration date. Yes. uh, And we have to make the most of the lives that we have. And it seems like a long time, a day, a week, a month, a year. uh, But that time goes by so Mm -hmm. quick. Uh, and so uh, you're right. That is our legacy is to be able to teach and implement that into our kids that are good members of society that are going to continue the good things that we have going in this nation. Yeah. And, um, you know, and also you just want them to be happy in life. Like, number one, I want them to find happiness. And um, I was telling you the other night, like watching my kid work really hard at this basketball team, winning the game, a really tight game in the end. Yeah. And those girls won and to watch them celebrate and the joy on her face and to know you know in my heart it's not it's not just like riding a roller coaster that oh that's fun you know you don't remember riding a roller coaster for years but what you remember is when you put everything into something like like basketball or like her school or whatever it is but she puts everything into 
queer basketball and then to win and see that joy in her face and know that that's her hard work that's her discipline that's her practice that's everything yes. going into that late nights uh, early mornings that is amazing to see yeah. as a parent yes that's and, and, and it, it's not just basketball it's everything hunting it's so much fun you've, you've taken your girls hunting <laughs> obviously I've seen the, the stories and, and the photos it's fun to watch them and to get to relive that that innocence and that you know the the first time they ever went and did this or the first time they got cold and had to had to you know tough it out the first time they got tired all that stuff it's that that is like i said it's it's your legacy it's what it's what we get to leave behind Oh, an adventure with dad. When you get, when I get to take my girls on a, on an adventure and we get to go drive halfway across the state, we immerse ourselves in this new habitat. We're camping, we're backpacking. There's no phones, there's no communication. Uh, I can have these, these deeper conversations with my girls and really shape them. And it just means more. Like I don't, I try to have meaningful conversations and time with them at the house and we do, but there's just this deeper connection when you're on a, an adventure. And, uh, you know, I really cater them to the girls and I don't make them easy. I challenge yeah. them, but I also don't want to burn them out. You know, my yeah. fun isn't quite their fun yet. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. like your level of adventure is not quite theirs yet. Yeah. Yeah. They're just not going to, it's going to be too much and it's going to burn them out. Now, uh, I know, you know, what the success feels like. And so you have to give them a taste of that. So they like it. So they're willing yes. to put more in to yes. eventually get to this point where they want to do, you know, a super adventure, but yeah, yes. it's the best. Yes. I, I took my 12 year old this year, uh, first time hunting. And, uh, it was, it was, it was supposed to be this easy, you know, we have a, we have a lease, uh, where we live on the farm ground. We, we lease it for wingmen for, for duck hunting and, and goose hunting, but there's deer there. I was like, oh, you know, I'll take my 12 year old and, and she didn't draw anything. She's apparently got my luck. She didn't draw any tags. So we're just going to do general deer. We're going to go down on the lease and we'll just shoot one of these whitetail or mule deer bucks that come in. We spent 10 days at this. I mean, this is supposed to be a chip shot and it was 10 days and it got nine below zero one day and we're sitting out underneath this tree and uh, she's just tough as nails. And it, it, it reminded me, just reminded me that you can't take them to your level yet. You have to, you know, you have to get it to their level. Otherwise, they'll burn them out. And, you know, it's nine below zero. And we sat there for an hour and a half. And she looks over me. She's just, you know, she's my tough one. She's mentally really, really strong. And uh, she looks at me and says, Dad, my feet are really cold. I said, can you wait 30 more minutes till it gets dark? She goes, yeah, I think so. And about 15 minutes, she goes, Dad, I can't feel my my feet at all. I'm not sure I can walk. It's like okay, let's 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 come out of this. And of course, this is this is my luck. We come walking out, and it's not even dark yet. It's close, but it's not dark yet. We come out. We get 20 yards from the pickup, and a buck walks right past the truck, right past 20, 20 feet from the pickup. <laughs> and of course, at that point, you're like, well, there's no way because she's a new hunter. There's no way we're gonna actually get to set up, and this is gonna happen. And so you just watch it. And she, and she was, you know, it's one of those moments you go, oh, this is going to ruin her. This is absolutely going to ruin her. And she was so positive about it. She goes, oh, that means he's going to be here tomorrow. Let's come tomorrow. Oh, done. I was like, this is so freaking cool. And, of course, I go home and, and the next day we have blankets and we have, you know, things that are keep going to keep us warm. And, and uh, I haven't figured out, no deer. Ten days of that. We spent ten days sitting and it was nothing 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 and she did finally end up shooting a doe uh because where we at or where we're at on it closes for bucks and then it stays open for a couple weeks for does and she shot she ended up shooting a doe her proudest moment it's it's the screenshot on her cell phone is her and her doe and we got to you know i we did the whole field processing and then we processed it on the in, in the kitchen and we ground burger and all that stuff absolutely impacted her bigger than you can you imagine and it's just a toe it's the the adventure wasn't even that much of an adventure compared to what you and i are talking about but for her that's a hell of an adventure mm-hmm. and that's what it's about that's what it's about yeah yeah that's the start of something special yes yeah to put that much time in and then to have uh a better attitude than a lot of guys out there in that position right she's tough, tough. i was like i got friends that wouldn't sit out here at nine below they're like i'm not sitting out here for a little buck <laughs> Well, she did. Yeah, that is so cool and yeah. so impactful. And, and that's what, 
you know, we can, we we have to remember that that we are shaping them into people. And these events, these are huge life events. You know, you think back at when you were 12 years old yeah. or 13 years old yeah. to see this and open your eyes to this and so what Dad does and uh, uh, what it's about and where our meat comes from and the processing and the and then just the connection with their dad. Yes. You know, to go like I know for my girls, they they love to hunt and they go. But really, it's an adventure with dad. Like that's where they go is to go spend time with me doing what I love yeah. to do. And so they come out and they do it and they immerse themselves in it. But yeah, to be a part of that, uh, uh, shaping little humans, it's the best. Yeah, and, and you, you're you know the conversations are amazing because I would come home from I mean ten days you're standing there and you you're kind of chatting and there's nothing going on. You can see everything, so we're kind of talking. I would come home and tell my wife stuff about about our daughter, and she goes, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I was like, ha I got a better connection than you do. <laughs> but yeah. it's 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 amazing, and those are those are conversations that you'll never be able to replicate. Mm-hmm. And at twelve, she's you know she's still listening and looks up to me. I'm still you know cool in her eyes, and those are things that that uh, I get to shape so that the next crazy years, because I'm sure teenagers, you know better than me. I don't have a teenage yet. Those are going to be crazy years, and those will be what she. Uh, grounds herself with when when life gets crazy for her absolutely well and then you know everybody warns you of the teenage years but um uh with my girls it was great you you raise them with the right ethics and the right morals and you raise them to be mentally tough and you're trying to teach them all these lessons uh you know all of that shows up in their teenage years and they're good human beings and sure they're going to make a mistake here or there along the way but you've taught them not to lie and to be truthful and to tell you things be honest with you you teach them all these things and then they go into practice and sure they you know they don't tell me everything i know that (laughs) um but uh they're really good kids and um you know they maybe had a mistake here or there but for the most part they're good people with they're goal orientated, goal minded. Yeah. They're into getting good grades, going on to college, choosing a good field where they can build a good life for themselves. Uh, they're passionate about the things that they love to do, and they love to spend time with their friends and playing on the teams. And mm-hmm. uh, but they're just good human beings. Yeah. And so you know, you'll you'll definitely have some challenges along the way, uh, but it it won't be as bad as you think. And I still have this great connection with my girls. And now you know, I'm having to transition as I have one in college that. I I still want this good, meaningful relationship with her. You know, I realize she needs her independence, but now, you know, I'm not very good at keeping in communication or text. And sure, I'll just hear from mom what she's up to, but I need to have a connection and a relationship with her. So I need to make sure that I text with her because that's the way she communicates. And so, you know, I'm sending texts to her. I'm checking in. I'm seeing how she's doing. And then, you know, to have her call me when she has a problem and then really want to talk it through with her roommate and what she should do and what the next moves are. Like she turns to me for advice, you know, and, and, and that means the world is we're still trying to shape them. And even though they're 19 and they think they're all growing up, (laughs) you know, it's uh, they there's proof your brain hasn't fully formed until you're 25. Yeah. Um, they they are grown and you have to give them respect and start treating them different. They're still your kids, but they're they're growing up. Like they're transitioning starting, yes, to a friend is yes, what they're doing. Yes. And so, um, yeah, I'm still working hard to have these great connections with my girls, uh, but that's surrounded by this adventure that you talk about. So this summer, planning backpacking adventures and floating adventures, yes. and I'm going to have you know both my daughters in the house again. Like I'm really looking forward to it, and uh, I'm not going to take it lightly because I know how quick time goes. So you said something very impactful to me, I, I don't know, probably one of the first times we hung out, and you said, uh, I'm, when I'm hunting, I'm thinking about hunting. When I'm at home, I think about home. And, and basically, you were talking about focused intensity. Explain that a little bit. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly it. Um, you know, we're all in our, in our own minds a lot. We're in our, our own thoughts and, and um, our, you know, our jobs, there's stress that comes with it. There's problems that come with it. And so uh, day in, day out, um, you know, we're thinking about things. And I just catch myself uh, in this bad habit where I'd come home uh, and I'm almost a downer. I'm thinking about the problems. I'm thinking about tomorrow, can't really let it go. And it's just replaying in my head. And I'm 
I'm there, I'm having dinner with my girls, but I'm, I'm just not engaged, I'm not present. Or, you know, I'll sit in front of the TV and I'll watch a show, but we really didn't have any of these meaningful conversations and we're not really spending quality time. Everybody's in a yeah. device, we're not really talking or communicating, and so... You're listening you know, to podcasts. I yes, mean, come on. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. But that's it. Like, you, you can't, you can be there and not be present. Or you can be there and have these meaningful relationships where you're laughing and joking yeah. around with each other. You're listening to music. You're, you know, and so I just learned to, once I'm off work, I'm off work. I'm really good about getting away from my cell phone, shutting that off. And, and I know the most important thing for me is not to send an email, not to send a text. It's to hang out with my girls uh, and to enjoy the time. And us as a family, even with teenagers, we all still hang out in the main room. We all still have dinner together. You know, it's That's not where they just disappear back in the bedroom and they're gone and sure they need some alone time too and homework and whatever else but um yeah i just they're naturally gravitating to that to that great room that living room where you guys are hanging out that's what they do that's what we do that's what i'm doing yeah so how so let me ask you this how do you turn that off How, how you know as as a consumer as a as a just a regular joe that 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 uh i find myself doing that how do i turn that off yeah um, it's, it's very difficult, but it's just a, a, a practice. It's a habit that you build and it's, um, it's living in the present moment. And so yeah. you can be on a hunt and not even be on a hunt. You're thinking about work. You're 100%. thinking about emails, you're texting things back. And so I've gotten good at like, you know, I, I like who I am. I know, uh, that I'm really good at the jobs that I have. I know that I'll meet deadlines, I'll turn in things, and so I can walk around with my my head held high. And I know that I can only control what I can control. I can control me, you know, I can control my guys, my company, you know, whatever the case is. Um, but there's things that are just out of my control. And life is full of these challenges and these problems you're gonna face day in, day out, and some yeah. are worse than others. And so I've just tried to get good at, at getting in the present moment, living for, for right now, this conversation that we're yeah. having. You're tuned into this conversation like I am. Nothing else matters around yeah. you. Like this is the this way is it's got to be with This is the most intense conversation I've had because we have rarely looked away from each other. This is yeah, this yeah. is what it's meant. That's what I said. It's focused intensity. Yes, exactly. It's living in that present moment, and it's done through practice and habit, and it's done through uh, taking care of your responsibilities, being proud of who you are, knowing that you're a, a good person, a good carpenter, you know, good writer, whatever that is, mm-hmm. because you work hard at it. And then I can walk around with my head held high. I can live in the present moment. I know I can deal with whatever tomorrow's problems are tomorrow, yeah. and I'll find a solution, yeah. or I'll do the best I can to solve it. But that. That's how I do it. That's awesome. It's basically focused intensity and, and understanding that you can't control everything. Mm-hmm. And be who you are and be cool. Be, you know, basically be cool in your own, in your own skin. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. That's, yeah. that's really profound. Really, really profound. So I have three questions for you. Okay. Number one, if you had a group of teenagers, we were just talking about teenagers. If we had a group of teenagers, what would you want to... Uh, I guess what would you, what could they learn from Brian Barney? Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, find what you love to do in life. Find your passion, something that drives you, and then put everything into it. Yeah, that's a meaningful life. That is, oh man, that's that's freaking awesome because that's that's what life is about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Focused absolutely. Focused intensity. Yep. All right, number two. Why do you hunt? Hunt. Gosh, that's a tough one. So there's so many different reasons why I hunt. I mean, I love the the challenge of it physically and mentally. I love the chess game uh, that I play with the animals. I love uh, the process of, of learning. Uh, and, and, and really, you know, I've just found my passion, something that I truly love. I mean, I love the, the meat living off that year round. It's the best organic oh, protein man. on planet Earth. I love providing for my family. Uh, but really, life is, uh, uh, bow hunting has taught me a lot about life, and it's made me better at construction, better at family. It's made me reflect upon all these different things, and so it's, it's such this positive light in my life. So, uh, so many different reasons. If I if I had to pin it down, it, it's just it's something where I can put my passion where, and it's the most intimate 
interaction with nature that you can have this predator prey relationship and it's it's primal when you're mm-hmm. out there it's visceral you can feel it and and it it also the stress seems to wash away when you're in that present moment really engaged in an activity that that I love and so um I I, I would say I, you know, I do it for the, the love of the game, the love of the process, the, the whole deal. Like, I think every season I like it more and more. Every season I put more and more into it, and there's no ceiling to it. There's no yeah. limit to how good I can get or how efficient I can be in the mountains. And, you know, at first it was all about killing a big animal. I still like to chase big critters, don't get me wrong. But, but now it's really for enjoying the, the experience and the adventure of it, to go out there and really immerse myself, you know, like a, to, to, to really see what I'm capable of, to really test myself. Uh, so I'd say that's why I do it. That's, that's awesome. It, it, the, the, the thing I got out of that is amazing that it's not just the killing of it. It's not just the trophy because it's not. Mm-hmm. It's the whole adventure, and it's, it is constantly changing. You can never master this. That's the beauty of it. Mm-hmm. You can never be the best hunter mm-hmm. that doesn't exist mm-hmm. because you're constantly going against the animal that has you know you're in their living room you, their wits are better than yours that's awesome all right last question and this is gonna be a fun one what are you gonna be thinking about on your deathbed my deathbed gosh uh, facing one's own mortality is such this mental conundrum you it know is. it's um so difficult to deal with in your own mind and to be okay with Uh, I hope that when I'm sitting on my deathbed, uh, that I worked as hard as I could at at all facets of my life, that I can look back and I can look back at my friendships and go, I I made genuine good friendships. I was really good to my friends. Uh, I spent time with them, with my family. Like I was the best husband and father I could be. And and the best husband and father I can be uh, is, is not is not being a, a beta male that's there at home all the time. No. It doesn't do anything. Like it is, uh, uh, I'm also teaching this uh, to, to live for your passion and to live for adventure. And they see me, like I, uh, I put it into place. And because I have this thing I love, I'm able to work hard at my job to be able to create more of this, to be able to do more of it. And through that, I, you know, I'm able to put more time in my family and make sure we're going on vacation, spending meaningful time. That way I can be gone for a couple weeks. And, and they know that you know we went on adventures here we did this we did that dad's trying to work for his time off and get everybody on the same team so i just hope i look back and um i i was the 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 best person i could be all the way around and that's you know bow hunting and that's a a father that's a a dad that's a, a a worker and then you know that i have these these right ethics and morals that you know i I tr- told the truth. Like sometimes lies are easier to tell than the than the truth. And to really stand up and do the right thing whenever faced down this path is I take the right path. I take responsibility for my actions. Um, and so I just want to front load and do as much as I can in this life. So when I get there, I really feel fulfilled. Yeah, that's 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 awesome. I, I heard this recently. Uh, Mike Glover was on, and I asked him the same question, and he said the key to it is and he he said this he goes i I have watched guys die lots of guys die and the the ones that haven't lived like you were just talking about it's horrible to watch because they instantly flash through the things they should have done and the guys that have lived like you were talking about they go peacefully and it's amazing that's that's i think the most profound thing is live the guy live as the person you really want to be don't mm-hmm. fake it. Oh, that's spot on. I, that's exactly it. Live like the person you want to be. And you can be any person. Yes. You you just have to start making decisions that reflect that person you want to be. And you're going to be faced with them every day. Yeah. And just try to make the right decision. Try to keep a cool head. Think through situations. Be the person you want to be. That's beautiful. Well, I appreciate you coming on, man. Uh, this, is, this is fun. It's going to be a, a heck of a treadmill as you said, but it'll be good. It'll be fun. I'm going to get to talk to some really neat people and, and get some really in-depth conversations just like this. I appreciate it. Yeah, that was intense. Yeah, thanks so much, Ike. Yeah, no, I enjoyed it. <laughs> we didn't even it. talk hunting. Do you know that? <laughs> 45 some, minutes, we haven't talked hunting there, hardly at all. There is some hunting in there. Yeah. <laughs> Not a single yeah. strategy. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Yeah, thanks, buddy. appreciate it. Yeah, thanks. 
Hey folks, thanks for listening today. I hope you enjoyed this episode. You got to hang out with some of the people that I think are most the most interesting I've ever met. And remember, fair chase is the only way to hunt and take trophy big game. See you next time right here on Eastman's Podcast Edition.